What's up, guys? Today, we're going to be talking about psilocybin. Um, there's an issue with these two pictures, with one of these two pictures. And you guys are going to have to tell me at the end of this presentation what the issue is. All right, so what are we going to learn today? What is psilocybin? Where is it derived from? What do mushrooms look like in nature? Receptors that psilocybin affect, similar compounds, mechanism of action and pharmacokinetics, physiologic effect, abuses, slash potential danger, and relative to other compounds, therapeutic potential, and then some depression studies at the end. Um, also, we're going to look at where people other than healthcare professionals get information on psilocybin and other hallucinogens. Um, first, let's look at the structure of a mushroom. You guys can see all the way on the left, there's the partial veil and universal veil. Eventually the universal veil grows upwards and becomes the cap with scales or remnants of the universal veil. And the bottom part uh, remains at the bottom of the mushroom and becomes the vulva. Um, okay. So here are some pictures of psychoactive mushrooms with psilocybin from Gold Frank's textbook. You can see that there's a blue tint to some of the damaged portion of the mushrooms, which is typical for mushrooms that have psilocybin. And on the next slides, you'll see some more pictures from Arrowid, which is um, a website a lot of people use to get information about hallucinogenic mushrooms and other hallucinogens or other drugs in general, and to try to use them safely. So these are just pictures I chose that I thought looked cool. These are small psilocybin sciences fruiting bodies. So they're not fully formed mushrooms yet. They look kind of cool, they're slimy, and they're coming from some wood chips. Um, these are some more fully formed psilocybin cubensis mushrooms. You can see they're growing on some cow poop. Um, these are little cute um, budding mushrooms, and you can see the scales are left over on their caps. These are what mushrooms would look like in someone that's growing them in like a plastic container. And these are how mushrooms are kind of sorted and weighed out. And you can see that the size of the mushroom on the right, you can see the, the pennies for comparison. This is 30 grams of wet mushroom, not dried out mushroom, um, which is approximately what one dose of psilocybin would be like for someone to consume recreationally or for research purposes, as we'll see later on in this talk. Um, so what other hallucinogenic substances do people use? This is um, a list from up to date. Other than psilocybin, people commonly use LSD and synthetic cannabinoids like K2 and spice, which are derived from marijuana, but altered with other chemicals. And salvia divinorum, you can see it's this purple plant on the right, and the leaves of the salvia div divinorum plant are consumed for hallucinogenic purposes. Um, what other hallucin hallucinogenic mushrooms are there? So um, psilocybin in particular, it's, uh, it's derived from... Uh, many different genera or genuses. Um, so psilocyba, paneolus, conocybe, pluteus, and gymnopilus. Um, also, there are other mushrooms that don't have psilocybin, but have other psychoactive compounds, most notably the Amanita muscaria and Amanita pantherina, which I have pictured below. Um, they contain ibotenic acid and ibotenic acid derivatives like musamol and muscazone. Um, which affect the NMDA receptors. And psilocybin affects a different receptor, which I want you guys to think about and see if you can remember or guess which receptor it affects. And also out of these two pictures, do you guys know which one is the Amanita muscaria? It's a very common mushroom in, I think your European mythology is what I've read about it. It's this red one with the white scales. So, it was postulated according to some random YouTube videos I found in Google Images um, that these mushrooms were the reason for the lore of Santa Claus. So um, people in the woods of Eastern and Northern Europe would um, give people these Amnita muscaria mushrooms and people would hallucinate. And the coloring of the mushrooms uh, represents like the colors of Santa Claus, red and white. And also the fact that they grow under conifers, so like Christmas trees. And um, oftentimes the people that would deliver these mushrooms would arrive by reindeer and sleigh, similar to Santa Claus. So that's a cool correlation. Um, these are some more pictures of psilocybin containing mushrooms. You can see some of them have a blue tint to them. 
And just to give you guys like a comparison of what these mushrooms would look like in nature. Um, okay, let's talk more about the other hallucinogenic drug classes. So you can see on the left, there are many amphetamine class drugs and a lot of them look like they're written in code, like 2CD, 2CC, 2CE. So if, if you guys see any of these um, written out or patients tell you that they're using any of these, um, these substances, uh, these would be in the amphetamine class. Um, this, the, the class that contains psilocybin, uh, which becomes psilocin once ingested, are from the tryptamine class. And another funny name of a drug that I've never heard of before. I did this presentation is foxymethoxy, which is also part of this class, as well as AMT and DMT. Um, the aryl cyclohexylamines, these are things like ketamine, fencyclidine, dextromethorphan, which is found in cough syrup. Then you have the lysergamines like LSD, which is mostly compared to psilocybin as the first um, like synthetic hallucinogen. And at the very end, you have the salvia divinorum plant, which I showed you in earlier pictures. Um, so how dangerous is psilocybin? This is a slide from, this is a graph that was published in The Lancet, um, a UK journal. And it shows that mushrooms and LSD all the way on the right actually contribute the least amount of um, harm to society. Uh, compared to alcohol, which contributes the most amount of overall harm to society. Um, also, you can see here that LSD and psilocybin are very low on the dependence potential scale, and also the active dose to lethal dose ratio is also very low, meaning that the amount it takes to kill you is thousands of times greater than the amount you have to ingest to get uh, psychedelic effects. And compared to heroin or morphine or alcohol, these numbers are very different. Uh, so how does psilocybin work? Earlier I asked you which receptor it affects. So the answer is the 5-HT2A receptor. You can see that serotonin in the upper left and the middle of the screen, it, it acts on, it is the primary actor on this receptor in physiologic conditions. However, psilocin and psilocybin, as well as LSD, they mimic serotonin and they also can act on this receptor. You can see a diagram of, uh, of this happening. So these are all the different serotonin receptors, the 5-HT receptors. You can see 5-HT1 receptors are on the presynaptic terminal of the synaptic cleft. And the 5-HT3, 5-HT2, and another type of 5-HT1 and 5-HT4, 6, and 7 receptors are going to be on the postsynaptic cleft. 5-HT2 is where um, psilocybin and LSD act. Um, this is a graph from up to date. So we can see the pharmacokinetics of different hallucinogenic substances. We can see that psilocybin um, takes six to eight hours to wear off, peaks in one to two hours, and its onset is 20 to 30 minutes. And also it gives us the dosing for psilocybin. So 10 milligrams equate to 20 to 30 grams of fresh mushrooms, which is what we saw in being weighed in an earlier image. And you can also take one to two grams of dried mushroom compared to the 20 to 30 grams. So dried versus fresh, they're different dosing. dosing. Um, so what happens when you take any kind of hallucinogen, including psilocybin, um, at higher doses, uh, or depending on a person's physiology, you can have a sympathomimetic effect. So you have increased heart rate, respiratory rate, your temperature rises, your pupils dilate, you have um, increased bowel sounds, and you can sweat. Um, also, you have like a, a heightened sense of euphoria. You feel good. Some people have an out-of-body experience. People feel that time is distorted. You have synesthesia, which is where you can like hear colors or see sounds. Um, and a lot of people that take psilocybin in particular, from the studies that I've read, they say that it's one of the most meaningful experiences they've ever had in their lives. But take that with a grain of salt. Like, don't just go out and start taking psilocybin because of this presentation, because um, it may have some side effects. Um, so now let's talk about psilocybin in the medical literature. So a 2017 review that I read um, 
said that psilocybin dem demonstrated a lot of potential in treating things like suicidality, depressed mood, anxiety disorders, OCD, alcohol dependence, and tobacco dependence. However, this is mostly based on case reports. Retro retrospective studies are open label trials, meaning not a lot of them were case control, cl double blinded clinical trials, which is like the gold standard of demonstrating um, actual benefit of psilocybin. So here's one of the more recent studies. This is from 2021. 59 patients were recruited from the UK. Um, all they needed to have was a Hamilton depression scale score of above 17 over 52, um, which was categorized as longstanding and their depression had to be ca categorized as longstanding or mild to severe. Um, they could not have a history of serious suicide attempts. They were given 25 milligrams of psilocybin twice, three weeks apart, or one milligram of psilocybin twice, three weeks apart, as well as escitalopram, which is an SSRI with the one milligram group. So what people found, um, what the study found was that the QUIDS SR16, which is another depression scale score, the change in this score was not statistically significant. And you guys can see this graph here. So in comparison with comparing the 25 milligram to one milligram group, there was a little bit of overlap, but there was a change in the depression score, just not statistically significant. There were no serious adverse events, like no suicide in this group of 59 patients. Um, let's compare this to another, and this is just a, a graph um, showing the secondary outcomes and primary outcomes and their statistical significance. Now in the second, study that I looked at in 2022 in the New England Journal of Medicine, 233 patients were recruited over 22 different sites in Europe, United States, and Canada. Um, similarly, people at clinically significant risk of suicide were also excluded. And these people were given single doses of psilocybin, 25 milligrams, 10 milligrams, or one milligram. And they found a statistically significant difference between the one milligram and 25 milligram group. However, in the adverse events, um, section, they mentioned that suicidal ideation, self-injury, or hospitalizations are reported in a dose-dependent response. 9% um, of the participants in the 25 milligram group, 7% in the 10 milligram group, and 1% in the 1 milligram group, which demonstrates a potential danger of psilocybin. And this is another graph similar to the one I showed you before. Um, so now outside of the medical literature, where do people get information on things like shrooms and psilocybin? So these are this is a list of websites that people use and Arrowit is one of the more popular websites, which I'm gonna talk about a little bit more. You can see you can buy different um, products, um, different hallucinogenic products and safety, no, sorry, not the products. You can buy like safety equipment to make sure that the drugs that people are consuming are safe. So you can see like fentanyl test strips in some of these um, websites, amphetamine test strips, MDMA testing kits. So it's very cool that this is available for people to buy. Um, so the history of psilocybin. So psilocybin was first isolated by Albert Hoffman in 1957. Um, synthetic psilocybin was made shortly after that in 1958. The Controlled Substance Act of 1970s um, stopped psychedelic research from um, going on. And then more recently, in 1993, psychedelic research reemerged um, after it was less, what's the word? What's the word for like, yeah, less taboo, exactly. Um, it was less taboo to take psychedelics in 1993. This kind of research reemerged. Um, 1995, Arrowhead was formed. And my interpretation of the website after looking through it for a few hours was it's kind of like the Wikipedia of drugs. It has a collection of user experiences and also very well researched, but not by healthcare professionals, information on dosing and safety. Uh, however, because these people, th this um, research is not based on, a lot of times not based on um, scientific evidence that I was able to find, at least maybe it is. Um, that's why you should like take things written on there with a grain of salt. And there's also a great image database. Some of the images I found were from most of the images I found were from Arrowhead. And this is a quote for, from an emergency room doctor and toxicologist from Ohio State University. Arrowhead is so comprehensive and so much of the information is correct that unless you're an expert in medical toxicology, you may miss the dangerous information that's close to the surface. So 
um, this guy with much more experience than me has some doubts about some of the information on Arrowhead, but says that most of it is comprehensive and correct. Um, this is an example of what you can find in Arrowhead. So it's actually very cool. You have um, different dosages, depending on how heavily you want to hallucinate. You can choose a threshold dose, a light dose, common dose, strong dose, or heavy dose, and it gives you the weight of the mushrooms you should use. And it also mentions the onset of, of the mushrooms and the duration of effect, which is similar to what we found in up to date. Also here, you it breaks down different um, different species of mushrooms and tells you the percentage of psilocybin in each one, which is pretty cool. And it, and it cites some studies. I haven't looked into these studies, but it's interesting that it has like this depth of information, which I wasn't able to find anywhere else. Uh, lastly, I want to leave you guys off with some pharma dukes. So these are um, quotes from Arrowhead users that used some kind of hallucinogens randomly generated along with um, Marmaduke's cartoons. So you guys can enjoy looking and reading at these. Um, here are my sources. Thank you.